is Dr. Pankaj Gupta. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for having me here. So we have a short video to play. We'll start with that. In 2012, 5.5 crore helpless citizens in India were forced into poverty because of exorbitant healthcare-related expenses. Out of these, 3.5 crore fell below poverty line due to spending on medicines alone. India's healthcare sector is facing a major crisis and the poorest of the poor are bearing the brunt. However, the ambitious National Health Policy 2017 brings with it the promise of a real and meaningful transformation in the healthcare landscape. The Government of India is now committed to fast-tracking initiatives aimed at ensuring health coverage for all. Given the scale and scope of this massive undertaking, it is a dream that can only be realized through the intervention of technology in the healthcare sector. Although it is commonly perceived that India is largely digitally illiterate, the facts paint a different picture. Today we have one of the fastest growing online communities in the world. The spread of mobile technology and radically declining costs of data is transforming the way people connect, transact and interact. Combine this with the grand success of Ayushman Bharat's healthcare coverage for the poor, the stage is set for the great Indian digital healthcare revolution. Imagine a healthcare system driven by digital personal health records, where information technology is used to leverage data, thereby enabling access to quality healthcare to anyone, anytime, anywhere. Where a national digital health ecosystem nurtures collaboration, co-optation, and interoperability among all stakeholders. The great Indian digital healthcare revolution is long overdue. If we can imagine it, we can make it happen. देश के 50 करोड़ से ज्यादा भाई बहनों को 5 लाख रुपये तक का हेल्थ एश्योरेंस देने वाली ये दुनिया की अपनी तरह की सबसे बड़ी योजना है पूरी दुनिया में सरकारी पैसे से इतनी बड़ी योजना किसी भी देश में दुनिया में नहीं चल रही पूरा यूरोपियन यूनियन उसकी जितनी आबादी है उतने लोगों को भारत में ये आयुष्मान भारत योजना का लाभ मिलने वाला Thank you for having me here. Once Modi ji has said, I really don't have to say anything. But uh, I will just talk about the work that we are doing based on the government's policies. Um, Access Health Digital is a not-for-profit entity. We work in eight different countries with go uh, governments very closely. In India, we are working with the government on the National Digital Health Blueprint and many of the things that have come out based on the blueprint. So, <clears throat> the journey actually started many years ago <clears throat> and I have been wearing different hats and working on it in various different projects. I will not go into a whole lot of details, <clears throat> but if you look at the way it has panned out, 
In 2013, the EHR standards came out, the metadata standards came out. And then in 2014, when Modi ji came, if you see the graph started rising up rapidly because the policy started changing and all of that was started to sort of come into a cohesive uh, structure. That was the national health stack that sort of bundled everything together. And later on, it, uh, in 2019, when we have the National Digital Health Blueprint coming out, it sort of amalgamates all the work in terms of the EHR standard, the metadata standard, the NIN, and so many other things that were done in the past. And it also lays an architecture framework for bringing all the different disparate systems together. Now this is a turning point, and the turning point is because of Ayushman Bharat. Ayushman Bharat is a turning point because it provides a very large coverage to India's population, something that has never been seen before. And there was a need to put a very robust IT platform at the back to be able to make this happen, without which it wouldn't have been possible to take Ayushman Bharat forward. There are three important things that I will talk about today. One is the siloes systems that are working in the public health as well as in the private sector. These are the systems that don't talk to each other. The second that I will talk about is the financial lever that Ayushman Bharat provides and why. And the third one is governance in terms of standards and the digital health governance. If you look at the systems that are out there, the public health systems have been there for a very long time and they don't talk to each other. Let me paint a picture. If there is a woman who has had tuberculosis in the past and she delivers a low birth weight baby, there is no way we can trace it back to figure out whether it was because of the tuberculosis or not, because all this data lies in different systems and they don't talk to each other. The private sector is just as bad. It's all broken, it's all silos. So how do we bring this together? If we really have to go to the next level, there is only one way. We have to stitch all the different pieces together. And that's where the first effort was done, which was the electronic health record standards which were put in place, it laid out, and I can see Bediji sitting here, um, so you know, it was, it laid out for the first time as to how do you bring all these different systems together. So it said the what and the why. The how was in the metadata data standards for health. It gives the building blocks in terms of data elements. A data element is a container that ha gives you the size, it gives you a data type, and it also tells you the value sets that go into it. So if you see three different systems that are examples I've taken, for gender, you have male, female, trans, other. Another one will have one, two, three, four. Another one will have X, Y, Z. Now if when you map these systems, you don't know whether X is male or X is y, uh, female, or in another system whether four is trans or it is other. There is no way you can find out unless you have a health data dictionary to be able to map all of these different systems together. I was interviewing somebody from RSBY and they said, you know, in RSBY, they had 16 different genders. Can you believe that? Because every system they dealt with had a different way of, you know, sort of codifying the gender. When they collated everything to make all the payments, there were 16 different genders they had to deal with. Now, this is the reality of the situation we are dealing with and obviously you need a common standard to be able to interface all of this together otherwise things won't work <clears throat> the national digital health blueprint has taken a lot from the ehr standard and the metadata standards and built an architecture on top of it it says that you need an ecosystem to be built at the national level to bring all the different pieces together. It lays down building blocks, 35 building blocks, and it also leaves innovation to the market to decide and build more building blocks. 
we as an organization have been uh, working in putting together some building blocks, and I'll talk about that. It also sort of lays a framework for governance. It says the National Digital Health Mission has to come up, and an authority has to come up that will look after the digital health governance. So that's the blueprint in short. Talking about the financial lever, we did a lot of independent research. We studied different countries. What we figured out was that wherever digital health transformation has happened, wherever health system transformation has happened, always there has been a financial lever. Any country that has not had a financial lever, the health system transformation doesn't happen. And we've seen that in India also. We've tried to implement the standards again and again in the past 10 years, 20 years, and it didn't happen very well. These were beautiful books that were printed, and they kept lying on their shelf. The industry did not adopt it. The reason was the industry always came back and said, what's in it for me? What am I going to get out of it? So there was no financial incentive. There was no incentive that the government could give. But that incentive now has come in the form of Ayushman Bharat. The reason is that, you know, India's population that was covered by any kind of health insurance before Ayushman Bharat was about 10-12%. Now, with coming of Ayushman Bharat, it goes above 50%. Now, that's a huge shift. It's a maturation of the health insurance sector. What happens is the number of claims that are going to come is going to be so large that it cannot be managed manually any longer. Last year, before Aishman Bharat was announced, the total number of health insurance claims were about 1.2 crores. Now, going forward, it will go up by at least 10 to 13 times. We don't even have those many humans to be able to adjudicate those claims. We will have to put a very robust IT system in place to be able to manage this. Why does it become a financial lever? It becomes a financial lever. We work very closely with Niti Aayog. And uh, the book Health System for New India came out. The chapter 5 is a digital health chapter. I'm a co-author of the uh, chapter 5. In the chapter 5, we talk about e-objects. Now, these e-objects are bundles of services that will be taken from the provider side and sent to the payer side. So the hospital can send the claim in a standard format, in the e-object format, and then claim can be adjudicated by the health insurance very quickly. So this becomes a financial lever because then the health insurance can say that the turnaround time for the payment is going to be very fast. So whatever the manual interventions were required, that sort of go away with, with this implementation. We've been working with NHA very closely. And there's a joint committee, a joint working group that was created between NHA and IRDA that recognized these e-objects. And the report was published based on which the common health claim platform is going to come out. This is going to carry the e-claim object forward into the market. Now, how does this work? On the provider side, the hospital information systems will have to sort of tinker with their code, they will have to incorporate the e-object inside it so that they can send it in a standard format. It basically changes the game completely. <clears throat> the reason being, see, I've been a CIO myself. When Max Healthcare was happening, I was involved in that. I know most of the CIOs of hospitals. I reached out to them. I asked them, when this happens, what do you want to do? All of them said, we are willing to hang upside down to make this happen, because today the payments get stuck from anything between 20 days to 20 months. If you can bring it down to a couple of days, we are willing to do anything to support it. So that's the industry that is speaking. So we said, well, in that case, we need to do an accelerator program. So then we launched an accelerator program. Access Health now runs an accelerator program for the industry. There are 22 digital startups and HIS vendors working with us and they are implementing these standards that we are talking about. And all of them are going to be ready in about six to eight months' time 
to be able to implement to the hospitals and be able to sort of send the claims in a standard format that we are talking about. So it's an ecosystem that is emerging, just that we are taking some initial building block and we are taking some initial steps to make this happen. <clears throat> this is in terms of, you know, I'll skip a few slides in the interest of time and go to the accelerator that I'm talking. So what we are doing is we have defined microservices architecture, which is the latest architecture based on these standards. And we have given these microservices to all these startups. What are these microservices? This is the technology that was brought by Amazon, Netflix, and Google. And these are very nimble, mobile-first applications. So you really don't have to design for enterprise class any longer. It is mobile-first. So this is what we've done already. And we have rolled it out to the vendors who are working with us. There are two options for them. They can either build it into their own system if they're building a new system, or they can build it as a bolt-on layer on top of an existing system, and they can make it compliant to the standards. We are working very closely with CDAC. CDAC is our partner for, uh, for, for the EHR standards. And we are also working with NIC eHospital. We are working with PHFI and many other industry partners. So this is the first cohort that has been rolled out. We will be rolling out the next cohort also. For the first cohort, we also have Mumbai Angels who has joined us to support the products that implement the standards. So in brief, you know, these are certain initial steps that will lead to building a healthcare ecosystem of future. And I'll stop at that. Thank you very much.